What's up PA world? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Mesha. In today's video, I want to walk you through my 50 fast recall questions for your pediatric exam, be it for a didactic or EOR. These questions were the ones that I studied when I was taking my EOR exams. For those of you that have already subscribed to my channel, thank you very much. And for those of you that haven't, please go ahead and subscribe and help me grow this channel. All right, guys. So the first thing first, before we do anything else, I just want to say congrats, guys. You made it through the didactic year. Now in your clinical year, you're going to get that patient hands-on experience. The way I prepare for my EORs is with the pen spread pearls, my school slides, study guides, and taking questions from Rush Review. And I also created my questions along the ways, which I made into the book now, with over 3,800 questions that I studied for my EORs. And these are the questions like most common, next best test, side effects of the meds, signs, triads, syndromes, uh, next best treatment, x-ray diagnosis findings, uh, risk for certain diseases, and so forth. My experience with the EORs was always that uh, they follow the same testing strategy. And if you look at all the testing that they did, they'll give you a long stem, and then a the last sentence will always ask, what's the most common, what's the side effect, what's the next best test? And with those things in mind, I start writing my testing questions, and I would just like study my questions over and over again. And that helped me tremendously with my EOR and a pack rat. It is always important to develop a good testing strategy. And now that you'll be taking 120 questions versus 50. Good luck guys. I hope you find this video helpful. I will leave a link down below where you can check out my book on the EORs. It is a tremendous book with 3,800 questions that will help you get ready for your EORs and nail it. So now we go with those 50 pediatric questions to prepare you for your EORs. Here we go. Good luck on your test, guys. Okay, guys. So here we go with the pediatric EOR 50 fast recall practice questions to test your knowledge before the exam. Before we begin, I would like to share another great tip with you, and that's my test taking strategy. Something that tremendously has improved my grades and reduced my testing anxiety throughout the PA school. I started using this strategy midway through my didactic year, and I never looked back. It has helped me stay on time. Uh, when I took my pants, I didn't feel overwhelmed. So basically, what I do, because keep in mind for your ER, it's 120 questions, 120 minutes. Some questions will have super long stem. You may get caught up in it, and just it, it's, it can be really, really overwhelming. Uh, so what I used to do was I will read the whole thing and by the time I get to the final answers, I will forget half the stuff that's in there. So basically what I do now is I read the last sentence first. By reading the last sentence first, I'm finding out what the question is asking me. And with that in mind, I look at over the answers. So which of the following should be the next not the best, don't let that trip you. So this is a next diagnostic study. You should order for evaluation of this patient. VQ, bronchoscopy, sweat chloride test, x-ray of the neck. So I know that they're asking me which test should I order for whatever this kid has. A 12-year-old boy presents with a history of intermittent cough, productive of thick, purulent sputum that is worst at night. So there, they may want you to think croup, so forth, make you selecting that, but it's not clear yet. His mother said it's associated with wheezing on occasion. She's concerned about asthma. Patient has no significant medical history. His older brother has asthma. You perform PFTs, chest x-rays, and cultures. The culture shows 3 plus pseudomonas arginosa. Right there, I have my answer. I know the most common cause of cystic fibrosis in the United States and children is uh, pseudomonas arginosa, and I know the best test for cystic fibrosis is a sweat chloride test. Next, best steps. Uh, the chest x-ray shows bronchiectasis, another giveaway that this is uh, cystic fibrosis. Bronchiectasis is most common cause. Uh, sweat chloride test is your safe answer. So you see how I didn't get tripped by other stuff in the question. By the way, uh, so sweat chloride test, most common cause of bronchiectasis for kids in the U.S. is cystic fibrosis. Patient will be with that thick, purulent, uh, foul-smelling sputum, which they didn't mention in this question, but it could be another one. That led me to think to the test where was sweat chloride test. Also, I know from my fast recall questions that pseudomonas arginosa is the most common bug, uh, and the sweat chloride test is the best answer. VQ is something that we order for pregnant patients if you're concerned about PE. Neck x-ray is for wheezing. 
I mean, you think about, you know, epiglottitis, uh, but this was no indication here. And bronchoscopy is highly invasive and will be of much help here. Should resolve by what age? Four months. If not, get an opto referral. Four months, start business. What's normal newborn feeding intake? 100 cc per kilo per day. Strep pharyngitis should always be treated for how long? The question will ask you and pretty much tell you it's a strep pharyngitis, but it will give you three different, four different uh, time, uh, and the 10 days is recommended time to prevent rheumatic fever. Treatment of choice for strep pharyngitis, penicillin VK. When can patient with strep return to the school? So the question again is they're going to tell you they came to the urgent care ER, you treated them, and the mother is asking you when can a patient return to the school? They're going to tell you not till uh, antibiotics are over, this time, that time. The answer should always be 24 hours after they start taking antibiotics. Otitis media treatment, OM treatment. Amoxicillin, 90 milligrams per kilogram a day. Uh, most schools will not require you to uh, remember dosing. I just included it because you may see it during your rotation. So it's kind of nice if you tell your preceptor, hey, this kid's got OM, uh, we should treat him oxycillin, 90 milligrams per kilogram per day, divided into two doses over 10 days. Just, you know, try and impress him if you know the dose. Most common bug causing otitis media, strep pneumo. Otitis media treatment if the patient has penicillin allergy. I've seen this question probably two, three times throughout my uh, PA schooling. Otitis media treatment, if the patient has penicillin allergy, you should be looking for ceftriaxone or ceftonir. What's considered recurrent otitis media? Three plus episodes of acute otitis media in six months or four plus in one year. Perforated tympanic membrane due to the infection was the treatment. They're gonna tell you about the kid that had a perforated TM, uh, and it has an infection and it's asking you what the treatment should be and it's amoxicillin But this time you're going to add ofloxacin drops to the antibiotics as well If amoxicillin fails the next step in management for Titus media is So they're going to tell you what patient came in the treated with amoxicillin But didn't do much for the kid mom wants something else and you should prescribe augmentin Most common bug causing the Titus externa Pseudomonas. So internal otitis media, strep pneumo, otitis externa, pseudomonas. Itchy eyes are most likely allergic conjunctivitis. Treatment for peds conjunctivitis. Ocuflox drops, QID to clear for two days. And this is probably the part they're gonna be asking the questions. Because they're going to give you drops. There's so many different kinds you can use. It's always going to be drops. But they're going to ask you for how long should they be taking it. And the answer should be two days after it's clear. After the eye clears. Most common cause of croup. Parainfluenza virus. Parainfluenza virus causes croup. What is Semster's triad? Aspirin sensitivity, nasal polyposis, and asthma. Barking cough should make you think of what? Croup. What x-ray sign would you see with croup? You should check that radiology video. I go through all the uh, radiology findings before the PA school. I was an x-ray slash MRI tech for 14 years in the Air Force and then later University of Utah. Uh, so I made a really nice video about all the radiology signs, keywords. I strongly encourage you to check it out because you will encounter radiology on every one of your rotations. So for a croup, you're going to be looking for that steeple sign. Drug of choice for pertussis. Macrolide, azithromycin. Most common sinus involved with orbital sinusitis. So they're going to tell you all different, all four sinuses. They're going to tell you patient has orbital sinusitis and is going to ask you which mo which sinus is most commonly involved, and that's ethmoid. Medication treatment for bed wetting. Desmopressin, DDAVP. Bonus question. What will DDAVP do to the sodium and what else is used for? 
DDABP will decrease the sodium and it's also used for treatment of uh, DI, diabetes insipidus. What are the chances that the baby will be getting the HSP2 from the mom during the delivery? They're going to give you a different percentage and you should select 50%. Kawasaki disease is the most common in what patient population? Is that Asian kids under five years old? And the way I remember that, I know Kawasaki is a pretty cool motorcycle that comes from Asia, I think it's Japanese, and that makes me think of Asians and it's under five years old. To suspect Kawasaki disease, fever should be present for at least how many days? Five days. This is the key to answering this question. Because they're going to give you a scenario where the kid that has fever six days is going to tell you fever for a week and a couple other uh, Kawasaki disease symptoms. And so if you see fever greater than five days, you should easily consider Kawasaki as one of your top answers. A most serious complication of Kawasaki disease, coronary artery aneurysm. I also seen this question several times throughout my PA school, I uh, worded differently, but it's always talking about a kid that has fever for a week, and it's going to ask you instead of what the treatment is or what the next best test is, it's going to ask you what is the most concerning thing, and your answer should be coronary artery aneurysm. Kawasaki treatment. IVIG and aspirin. I hope you guys like these kind of uh, questions. I hope it sticks. I hope you can see how I use these fast equal questions in compilation of my test taking strategy. Please hit that subscribe button, help me grow this channel, and let's continue. Uh, genetic cardiomyopathy caused by mutation of the cardiac sarcomere. It's a good question. So they're going to award it. Uh, talking about the cardiac sarcomeres, talk about mutations, and mention some cardiomyopathy, and you should be thinking about Hocum, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Uh, Hocum is pretty much that condition when you're going to hear the question may also state that it was a young athlete that just pretty much dropped dead on a, a field. You should be immediately thinking about Hocum. Uh, what's the allergic triad? Eczema, allergic rhinitis, and asthma. So remember, we have Samson's triad, and this is allergic triad. The itch, the rashes. You should be thinking about atopic dermatitis. Inflammation of the pilosebaceous units. Acne vulgaris. Pilosebaceous units, acne vulgaris. Persistent acne and hirsutism are the red flags for what? So they're going to tell you about the young uh, adolescent lady that comes into the urgent care ER, complain about persistent acne, you notice her shitism, and these should be the red flags for hyperandrogenism, PCOS, or tumors. Uh, so this should prompt you to do some further testing. Reed Sterling cells should make you think of what? Reed Sterling cells should make you think of Hodgkin's lymphoma. And the way I remember this is, have you read, read, have you read about Hodgkin's? Read Hodgkin's. Read Sterling cells, Hodgkin's lymphoma. Have you read about Hodgkin's? Hockham is characterized by which hypertrophy? Left ventricular hypertrophy. So remember, Hockham is the sarcomere mutations, left ventricular hypertrophy, Young athlete dropping dead on a field, uh, and which inheritance pattern is autosomal dominant? And the way I remember this is Hockham drives a dominant auto. Auto for autosomal and D for drives autosomal dominant. Hockham drives a dominant auto. The young athlete was driving a hot car. Hockham drives a dominant auto. Patients with Hockham are at increased risk for what? Sudden cardiac death, as we already mentioned that. Most common location for eczema in infants. Face and extensor surfaces. Extensor surfaces for infants and internal surfaces for adults. Oval coin shaped weeping patches. Oval coin shaped weeping patches should be making you think about nominal dermatitis. Nominal coin shaped. Nominal coin shape. Herald patch should make you think 
Pretty Rice's Rosea. Harold and Rosa. Harold and Rosa. Pretty Rice's Rosea will have what pattern of distribution? Christmas tree pattern. Who put up the Christmas tree? Well, Harold and Rosa did. Pretty Rice's Rosea lesions description. Salmon colored oval, round papules with a white circular scaling, very itchy. Salmon colored oval, round papules with a white circular scaling. Pity rises for their treatment. Not needed, it sells resolving. It is it just it just goes on it's away on its own. Derrier sign. Localized urticaria appearing where the skin is rubbed. Derrier sign. So this is when you can write on somebody's skin and it just appears later as urticaria. If even if you just rub it. Target lesions should make you think of what target lesions. Erythema multiform. I remember this as a multiple targets. Target lesions should make you think of. Erythema multiforme, multi targets, multi targets, multiple targets. Most common meds causing the SJS and TEN, Stephen Johnson syndrome and TEN, is sulfa drugs and anticonvulsant drugs. Sulfa is most likely what they'll mention in questions. SGS and TEN, they're going to tell you the kid is taking like sulfa medications and what's the most common. Concern you should have, and it should be SJS and T. How do you differentiate these two by percentage of the skin involved? TEN is greater than 30, and SGS is less than 10. So the way I remember this is 10 is 30 plus. When it comes to skin, 10 is 30 plus. So when it talks about 10, I know it's more than 30%. SJS should be minus, minus, less than 10. 10 is 30 plus. Most common bug causing impetigo. Steph Oris. You're going to see Steph Oris all over our skin. Impetigo buzzword. This is going to be honey colored crusted lesions around your nose, mouth, uh, young ch child. Uh, and you should be treated with the Bactroban, 2% ointment. If it's extensive, then you're going to use Caflax. But this is where, again, it's important to read that question. Read that last sentence first. This is going to ask you what's the next or what's the best. It's going to add, tell you how extensive it is. So, Baxterban ointment should be first. And if it's super extensive, then you can use Caflex. Most common cause of Malascum contagiosum. Uh, this could be a viral cause. It's Poxyviridia family. So, it's a viral uh, cause for Malascum contagiosum. It's... Uh, buzzwords should be uh, dome-shaped, flesh-colored, central obligation, uh, no treatment needed. If they really want to treat it, you can do uh, cryotherapy, just freeze it off. Lice treatment. Uh, Permetrin, 1% shampoo, wash clothing and bedding. And the way I remember this, the lice and scabies need the permit. Lice and scabies need a permit to be there. A permit for permetrin, 1% shampoo. Lice, 1%. Scabies, 5%. Scabies buzzwords. Linear barrows. Alright guys, so this was our fast, 50 fast equal questions. Uh, these are the study tips that I share with you. I hope you find them helpful. Uh, I also encourage you to check out my physician assistant study buddy for end of rotation exam book. It's packed with questions like this. It's got over 3,800 3, questions and it's divided by each uh, rotation. It is super helpful. I use it after I go through my pen spread pearls covering the blueprint and I will do some questions on Rosh, but I will study my fast equal questions every night over and over again till I had a downgrade and you saw that, how it helps me select the answer. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. Check out the other videos. Please hit that subscribe button. Stay safe. Stay positive. You got this. Uh, just keep on going. You're doing great.